Welcome to the game. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Sean, this is The Game Room, and we are continuing with our Black Talon uh, Heavy Gear series. We have, um, we did the unboxing, I showed you the build of the Vulture. In this video, I'm going to paint the Vulture, and I'm going to show you how I painted my entire Black Talon's um, force. Very, very simple and straightforward uh, color scheme. Um, they're Black Talons, they're black. Um, let me, okay, um, this is our vulture. He has been prepped, uh, primed, uh, showed you how we did the pins, and he's been primed black. That is the base color. For this, uh, paint scheme, basically, um, we're going to use plate mail, uh, metal. And then we'll do a very light dry brush of uniform gray. We'll use white to mark off the red points. And then we will use Blood Angels red for the red. Uh, Monster Brown is for the edge of the base. Um, the base I've already done in a ghrelin earth uh, texture. And so it looks like that. Okay. It's already uh, got that broken Badlands. Uh, ground to it and uh, that's what the monster brown is this color actually matches the uh, grill the uh, grill and earth pretty well once it's on the base um, so with that let's get started okay so for the the, the silver um, the plate mail metal use whatever metal you want to use really if this is just pure edge highlighting um, just pick a spot and start and I flattened out the bristles and I'm just hitting the edges literally that is the whole paint scheme for this guy um, he is going to he'll get a little bit of like I said, the dry brushing will help break it up a little bit, but in a nutshell, it is almost entirely edge highlighting to get the effect that I'm after. Now, some of these places, like right in here, I'll just go ahead and paint those, just because it looks cool. But they are black talon. I am going with, like I said, a very simple paint scheme heavy black and we're really just highlighting the edges okay so this is going to take a few minutes <coughs> um, but I will uh, speed this up and we'll be back momentarily
Now, when edge highlighting, all you're really doing is you're just hitting the edges with the paint, which is why I just took my brush. You get the paint in there, kind of flatten the bristles out so it's a little easier. Do not do this with your really expensive brushes. This is just the one that I've been using a lot, so it's about to get replaced, retired. But that's all you're really doing, you're just hitting the edges just to kind of give it an outline. And if you make a mistake somewhere, who cares? It just kind of adds to the character, which is really just kind of a neat side effect of this technique. Um, again, it's a very, very simple technique. If you're doing a different color, may not work as well. Uh, but hey, you know, try it. You know, and you could do the edge highlighting with a different color. Uh, a gray would probably work really well. Uh, the dark gray we're going to give with the light dry brush with would do, would probably do pretty well. I went with the silver because I like the metallic look of that it gives. Um, but again, uh, your model, your force, you paint it how you want. And if you do have black talents, I'd really love to see uh, how you painted yours. So. Uh, Drop me a comment uh, down below, or go to, uh, better yet, go to our Facebook page, Texas Gamer Geeks uh, Facebook page, and drop some pictures there. I'd really like to see the color scheme y'all are using. Okay, with the silver pretty much done, you can see that he's come a long way. There's a couple more places I'm gonna hit, uh, like back of his arm. Okay, these panels, I like to go ahead and just go ahead and fill those in. Just to help continue to highlight the model. And let's see. 
is kind of hidden right there. And then any last bit of edge highlighting that we can see that might need to be done. Okay, with that, here, just a quick flip of the brush. All right. Now with that, uh, I'm going to do the white. And again, the white is really just for any part of the model that you want to be red. And that, that's what I'm doing. Um, and that's really just going to be his eye lens here. On some of my other um, models they have rocket pods, stuff like that, those I went ahead and painted uh, white, but he does not have that. You know what, just because, we'll make, we'll make this little piece back here. We're going to do that in red also. And... Alright, that's probably it for that. Okay, if you have any touch-ups that you want to hit with black, now is probably a good time. And like here, got a little too much there. Just going to clean that up just a little bit. And where I kind of bumped the lower edge under his eye lens. Hit that. And there's some little places over here that were not. Okay. Okay. Blood Angels red for those little spots that I painted white. Which is islands. Now, why did I put the white first? Because the red would be really dark on top of the silver or the black directly. So the white will brighten up so that you can see it, it does show. But just a little red to give it a touch of color. Alright. Okay, uniform gray. We're going to do a very, 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 very light dry brush. Now, what does that mean? Um, our gray. We're going to load our brush. And we're going to wipe literally almost all of the paint out of the brush. Okay. Now, then we're just going to very lightly hit the model. And what this kind of does is it will just kind of break up the black and silver help give them a, a, a almost a transition um, so that there is not such a stark contrast between the two um, not a necessary step depending on the colors you like that you're using uh, but I found for what I'm doing it works really well just kind of helps break up the the stark dark black with the bright silver 
just gives it a little bit of a transition. It just kind of helps meld the two colors together. All right, I did see a couple of spots that I want to hit with the silver real quick. Uh, so I'm going to do that real quick. And those are these little pieces right there. Yep. And then if there's any uh, edges you want to brighten back up, now is the time. If that gray maybe dulled your silver down a little bit too much and you want to get those uh, edges shiny again, you just go right back over them. Now you could... Um, also at this point if you'd like do a light dry brush of the uh, plate mail metal i'm going to show you that real quick um let's grab this dry brush same same technique get your get your brush loaded And you could use this to kind of help brighten some of those edges back up, like so. And that really helps merge those two three colors now together. Getting those edges back up, but you still have that gray on there, which just kind of helps transition the colors, if that's the right word. All right. Now remember, these are war machines, they are battle machines, they have seen combat, so scratches and nicks here and there would make perfect sense. Um, so that's why I, I don't, don't really go after super precision, it's more of a, what looks cool and scary, you know, what's gonna, what's gonna look like on the battlefield. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to call his paint scheme done. Um, <clears throat> and now I need to get him mounted on the base. Now, easiest way to do this is to, with your pins, hopefully your pins are straight, so they'll go straight down. I need to fix mine a little bit. Um, I just dab them in a paint color. And knowing where you want to position this guy on the base, let's go like so. Let's set him on there. Actually, that may have been a little too far up on the one here on the left. Let me do that again. I like that point, but I want this one back a little bit further. All right. Okay. 
and that same drill bit or uh, pin vise, whatever you used earlier, to drill your holes for pinning. You want to do that again here. Again, be very careful. You do not want to drill your fingers. Children and adults who are not responsible get a responsible adult to help you. Um, because that's dangerous, you can't drill your fingers. I know this from experience. Um, all right, let's get that out of the way. All right, so now with my holes drilled out, they should just slide in to position. And he'll look like that. Okay. Um, now, if there is anything on your paper clips, whatever you're using to your pins here, go ahead and clean those up. If you super glue them in place, you shouldn't have too much to worry about them coming out, but they might, so just be careful. <clears throat> and once you know that they fit and you're happy with the way it looked, we're going to super glue these guys in place. Now, you're going to want some glue on the base of the, you still want glue on the, on the feet where it's going to touch. But you also want some on the paper clip where it's going to go through the base. You don't need to put it down here. That's just, there's no reason for that. Uh, you don't need to put it way down here because that's just going to help pin it under. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But for this, it sits on and he sits flat. Just kind of push him into position there. And kind of hold him up against that and these pins we're now going to bend um, <clears throat> pair of pliers or even your cutters here without just using them as a wedge get down in there I'm sorry it's a little hard to see I don't know if I can zoom in here I uh, see where these pins come out because they're black um, that's helping or not let's see maybe okay I, what I'm trying to do here is get as a just as a wedge to bend it right at the base and then push it down I'm gonna do the same thing on this side now if you want you can wait till this glue is dry I don't really have a place to put this guy without that without being able to sit him down on his base so but that's what we do we pin there and now he ain't coming off that base if you have um, you know if you've glued the pins in well he's not coming off the base so let's finish him off uh, Monster Brown is what I'm using for the edge of the base. You can use black, whatever color you're using. If you're doing them by, uh, you know, by the squads of four, you could, you know, use different colors for each one. So it's easy to tell, you know, which one's which. Uh, but for me, I just paint all of mine the same color. And do the edge of the base. Literally, we just do the edge of the base. Now, before I put the uh, ghrelin earth on it, uh, I primed them all with uh, the desert yellow army painter, just so that the the texture paint has something to hold on to. If the paint peels up, the uh, there is a color underneath it. Uh, and it's just, but it doesn't always get around the edges. So. And I want my edges to match the base color there. 
All right. Okay, one more step that I like to do, and that's put some tufts on it, different colors, and different, uh, maybe some different pieces that can cover up any blemish on the base. Uh, maybe the foot didn't come out quite right. Well, guess what? You can cover it up with uh, a couple of of these things if necessary. Uh, some of these are army painters, some are just different companies. I uh, honestly couldn't tell you at this moment. But go to your local hobby store, find some tufts you like. I like these because they kind of look like, you know, dead, sparse, or grass that might grow out in, uh, in the Badlands. And I'm gonna stick this one here, it looks like someone right next to his foot it'll help cover that one dot and a little piece of the base that's kind of peeling up it almost looks like he just stepped on it pretty cool huh? come on zoom in there we go and for this one on it There's a little spot right there that needs to be covered all right now with that he looks pretty good. I do need to touch the base up again, so we're going to go ahead and hit that one more time. Uh, Monster Brown. And with that, thinking he's done. Um, we are sitting at a total of 38 minutes of painting time. Um, I'll post some pictures of what the whole army looks like together so you can kind of get an idea. There were a lot of models. Um, I think when I finished pointing them out, uh, including the including the hyena, I'm sitting at 182 points. Without the hyena, it's 160. So uh, I did add the one model, so you can easily get 150 points out of the Black Talon 150 point army. So, um, which makes perfect sense. So with this, uh, I do have a little bit of uh, options. Uh, if I want to do a 100 point uh, force, want to do a 150 point force, I can vary it up a little bit um, and keep it interesting. Um, so that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Um, my Black Talon force is now complete. I will show you some pictures. And with that, uh, next thing is to get it on the table in battle and uh, we'll see how they fare. Uh, which that I'm excited to do. So we'll probably start with a 50 or 60 point force, then we'll do 100, then get it up to 150 just to kind of break them in. But uh, uh, hopefully we will get that uh, filmed and we'll see how they do. But for now, 
this will be the last of the Black Talon uh, series. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, find us on Facebook at Texas Gamer Geeks uh, on Facebook. And uh, please like, subscribe, drop a comment down below. And show me the pictures. If you run the Black Talons or any mod, any force, I'm always interested. What forces do you guys run? And, and how did you paint them? Uh, I go for simple, simple paint schemes. Three foot tabletop distance. I don't do, I'm not into any of those crazy people coming up with these stupid names for stuff. Three foot tabletop distance is what I'm going for. If it looks good from three feet, it looks good to me. And um, you're not going to win any awards with this. That's not the point. The point is to get your models painted, get them on the table as quickly as possible. And so they look good. And they're fun. And the models were a blast to paint. Um, I Again, as I've said before, I don't like metal models just because they're so darn difficult to put together. But they do look pretty stinking awesome. Um, so with that, I really do like the Black Talon. Um, and they came with a lot, a lot of extra weapons too. So I have a whole bag of extra weapons uh, and stuff for the Black Talons. Plus, I also, if you remember, I got the uh, Dark Series upgrade pack. So with these bits, I can pick up models from other factions. And turn them into Black Talon models. So that's a really cool uh, thing too. So if I say, "Oh, I like that model. It's pretty cool. I'm going to make a Black Talon version of it." I have the bits for that. So that's a neat thing. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment down below, and as always, have a wonderful evening. Bye now.